with our public servants. In that in interface, I made a promise which was also fulfilled to pay a 13th month basic salary to civil servants. Have a Merry Christmas and a Good New Year celebration. This in addition to the fact that all verified workers and pensioners in the state are now receiving their salaries and pensions regularly as at when due. In addition, I also reached out to the vulnerable poor in the state. We tried to create a stimulus package. We drew a list of 26 indigent people from the 4,748 polling units in the state and was able to pass a patron sum of 10,000 naira to each of these indigent people to be able to celebrate their Christmas. I'm told that we did the same thing to the seven people at the world level, to the seven people at the local government level. The question was to make them feel the positive breeze of Christmas. Since these people we are very, very hard hit by the economic fallout of insecurity in the state and the consequential effect of COVID-19 pandemic. Celebration season, particularly those who bore the brunt of economic hardship caused by COVID-19 pandemic and insecurity which rendered most of them jobless. The Imosa government Secretariat at Port Harcourt Road is receiving a, the much needed attention which will rehabilitate the all the buildings, restore water supply, restore electricity supply, and restore sense of commitment back to our civil servants and make the place functional and effective once more. of efforts to restore the psyche of the civil servants, I also tried to procure and present official vehicles to the permanent secretaries in the state, provided free bus transportation for other civil servants in the state at no cost to the civil servants. I restored the seniority and discipline in the service and they ensure that the hierarchy and the reporting line in the service is respected. Today, the permanent secretaries are truly the accounting officers of their ministers. When I met and interacted with the civil servants two weeks ago, their genuine appreciation of the transformation that has achieved, that has been achieved in the system gladdened my heart. 
I'm also happy that through the automation process, I installed in the service transacting businesses with government by automated system and programs. But beyond that, we've been able to send packing the payroll for stars who were short changing the most state government billions of naira monthly. This was outside the 500 million naira which a previous government was paying to consultants that were, was hired for the purpose of updating the payroll system. We returned everything about to the payroll nominal rule of civil servants back to the office of the head of service. As part of our efforts to address the welfare of workers, I have reconstituted and inaugurated the Civil Service Commission, which is now looking into the issues of non-promotion of civil servants since 2014. As soon as the Commission is able to do the needful, all those awaiting promotion will be promoted. The 2022 People's Budget. I'm happy to inform you that I have signed the 2022 Appropriation Bill, otherwise known as the 2022 Budget, into law, creating the Budget of Wealth, Consolidation and Recovery, the People's Budget. The 2022 Budget has the broad objective to ensure that our efforts to deliver a program of shared prosperity through wealth creation and recovery come into force this year. This budget of 381.4 billion naira is made up of recurrent expenditure of 96.7 billion and capital expenditure of 284.7 billion. In essence, the capital budget provision is over 74 percent. This is the first time in recent history that there is a clear budgetary emphasis on capital projects. The huge outlay for capital expenditure underscores the determination of my administration to build upon critical infrastructures, especially roads, that would transform the economic landscape of our dear state in 2022. Celebration season, particularly those who bore the brunt of economic hardship caused by COVID-19 pandemic and insecurity which rendered most of them jobless. The Human State Government Secretariat at Port Harcourt Road is receiving a, the much needed attention which will rehabilitate the old buildings, restore water supply, restore electricity supply, and restore sense of commitment back to our civil servants and make the place functional and effective once more. of efforts to restore the psyche of the civil servants, I also tried to procure and present official vehicles to the permanent secretaries in the state, provided free bus transportation for other civil servants in the state at no cost to the civil servants. I restored the seniority and discipline in the service and ensure that the hierarchy and the reporting line in the service is respected. Today, the permanent secretaries are truly the accounting officers of their ministers. When I met and interacted with the civil servants two weeks ago, their genuine appreciation of the transformation that has achieved, that has been achieved in the system, gladdened my heart. I'm also happy that through the automation process, I installed in the service transacting businesses with government by automated system and programs. But beyond that, we've been able to send packing the payroll for stars who were short changing Imo State government billions of naira monthly. This was outside the 500 million naira 
which a previous government was paying to consultants that were, was hired for the purpose of updating the payroll system. We returned everything about to the payroll, nominal role of civil servants back to the office of the head of service. As part of our efforts to address the welfare of workers, I have reconstituted and inaugurated the Civil Service Commission, which is now looking into the issues of non-promotion of civil servants since 2014. As soon as the Commission is able to do the needful, all those awaiting promotion will be promoted. The 2022 People's Budget. I'm happy to inform you that I've signed the 2022 Appropriation Bill, otherwise known as the 2022 Budget, into law, creating the budget of wealth consolidation and recovery, the People's Budget. The 2022 Budget has the broad objective to ensure that our efforts to deliver a program of shared prosperity through wealth creation and recovery come into force this year. This budget of 381.4 billion naira is made up of recurrent expenditure of 96.7 billion and capital expenditure of 284.7 billion. In essence, the capital budget provision is over 74%. This is the first time in recent history that there is a clear budgetary emphasis on capital projects. The huge outlay for capital expenditure underscores the determination of my administration to build upon critical infrastructures, especially roads, that would transform the economic landscape of our dear state in 2022, that will set it on an irreversible path to economic growth. And that will make all of us very, very proud. We are packaging now a 10-year economic development plan that will further define our economic roadmap for Imo State. This non-participant document will at leave my government to serve as a credible economic compass for the administrations that will come after me. In a few days' time, my administration will be two years old. I deem it necessary to update you on these genuine efforts we've made and are making. Our intention is to change the narrative of governance from the decadence and chaos we met on ground to the onerous task of restoring a true pathway to progress through democratic, inclusive, and accountable governance. We may not have reached the promised land, but I can assure you that it is in sight and that we are marching sure-footed with our eyes firmly focused on our destination. Recently, there have been every attempt by enemies of the state to remove our focus from the ball. But I can tell you, my eyes continuously will be on the ball. I dare say by the grace of God that we came prepared. Therefore, the daunting challenges we met on ground cannot deter us. I believe that we have made appreciable progress in arresting the rot we met on ground. This required courage sacrificial patience and wisdom. I pray to God Almighty for guidance and the strength to do that which must be done. I have no doubt that God heard our prayers and answered our prayers. I was fully aware that the Buccaneers that held the state hostage in the past would fight back with all energy at their behest. I knew they would employ every manner of antics to blackmail and hoodwink me into submission. But I remained confident and steadfast 
in the battle because I knew that no matter what they do or say, they will never be able to find any evidence of corruption against me. Because not only that I came, not only that I came to serve the people and not to steal from the people, he who is in me is more than who is in them. That is why every malicious propaganda and falsehood they have contrived against me in the social and the conventional media and other places has fallen flat on its face. This is because no evil plot against an innocent man will ever see the light of the day. So my beloved Ndimo, let us soldier on with confidence and faith because God is with us. However, there is always a price to pay for any genuine reform. In this case, for example, there was an initial delay in the payment of salaries and pensions as a result of the automation process. But the good news is that we have overcome those challenges and the verified civil servants and pensioners are now being paid as at when do. I have also given a firm instruction. I've also given a firm instruction to all the new cases of omission or otherwise to be addressed immediately. But for today, ghost workers shall no longer receive salaries in Imo State. And no consultant shall siphon our money anymore. It is laughable that as soon as I took over the reins of government, some people started shouting that the Imo roads were bad and needed to be reconstructed. Some even made short videos making a mockery of the name of Zodima. But the same people were here since 2011 when acid rain couldn't allow any roads. <laughs> when matters. <laughs> When matters started deteriorating until they got to the stage we met on ground. But in my characteristic manner, I took those harsh but misplaced criticisms as the burden of leadership. I rolled up my sleeves and comprehensively started addressing the dilapidated road infrastructure. I'm happy to inform you that no fewer than 90 roads are either under construction completed or about to be completed. The roads cut across the urban and rural areas and the three territorial zones of the state. Of the 99 roads, 32 are fully completed and commissioned. You will recall that President Mohamed Buhari was physically present for the commissioning of some critical roads completed by our administration, including the flood control mechanism at Chukumawaha Road, otherwise known as balloon-driven tunnel. Landlords whose houses had been abandoned prior to the building of the tunnel and subsequent recovery of the road are now very grateful to this government for the development. The ongoing construction of Owere Olu and Okigwe to Owere, dual carriage ways, when completed, will not only serve as some of my signature projects, but will act as a great stimulant to the economy of the state. The same contractor that is doing Owere to Okigwe, Owere to Olu dualization which is meant to be commissioned by East April this year, as soon as they complete the job and is commissioned, the same contractor will be deployed to Ebu Mbise to Abia Road. <laughs> 